Mr. Chairman, uh, my colleagues across the aisle said that those that, that cannot pronounce Kamala's name correctly are elementary aged children. I would like to enter into the record an article by Newsweek saying Bill Clinton pronounces Kamala Harris' name wrong during DNC speech. Bill Clinton, along with Al Sharpton, rapper Lil Jon, let's not forget that Joe Biden can't say her name right, neither can Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor, and this morning on Morning Joe, Joan Bias called her a camel. So I don't want to hear it. It's fake outrage. I would like to also enter into the record a screenshot of a text message I received from the uh, esteemed professor from Vanderbilt, Michael Eric Dyson, after my CNN interview, begged me for photos. In this text, he says, after calling me a uh, racist on CNN, Shh, don't tell anybody we look good together, and sent me a kissy emoji. Without then objection. The guy, the guy says, order. I'm gorgeous and all these photos. I don't think he's that bent out of shape on how anyone pronounces Kamala. Uh, and if we're going to have that standard, you got to hold it to both sides, not just one or the, one or the other. Uh, on to the issue at hand. I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, for our witnesses being here today. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have presided over the worst presidential administration in American history. Biden and Kamala Harris inherited a country with a strong economy and next to zero inflation. Under the Biden-Harris administration, inflation skyrocketed, st skyrocketed, wages stagnated, and the American families are struggling to make ends meet, as we're all well aware of today. Biden and Kamala inherited a world at peace and turned it into a world at war. Our allies are under attack, our adversaries emboldened, and America embarrassed on the world stage. In fact, even being forced to evacuate seven embassies during this administration. Biden and Kamala inherited a country with the most secure border in our nation's history. They flung our borders wide open to the largest invasion of illegal aliens our country has ever seen. The illegal aliens Biden and Kamala have led into our country have have gone on to rape and murder American citizens, including our women and girls, including 158 Democrats who voted against deporting illegals who are here, murdering, raping, and uh, who are also pedophiles, harming our women and girls. Biden and Kamala can't even tell us the difference between a woman and a mentally ill man in a dress. All of, of all Joe and Kamala's many failings, I'd like to focus my five minutes today on immigration, I'm down to about two, so we'll be quick. During her failed 2020 presidential campaign, well before her coup against Joe Biden, Kamala Harris completed an ACLU candidate questionnaire outlining her policy positions. I'd like to examine a few of her responses and how they've informed her work as border czar since she says her values have not changed. Mr. Chairman, I would like to enter into the record uh, this questionnaire, ACLU Rights for All Candidate Questionnaire 2019, Kamala Harris. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you. Uh, one of the strangest responses from Kamala in the questionnaire was when she indicated she supported providing taxpayer-funded so-called gender-affirming care for illegal aliens in immigration detention, which we all know is cutting off their private parts, taxpayer-funded cutting off of their private parts. So, Mr. Krikorian, is this occurring under this administration, and what are the serious safety consequences it may pose? Uh, well, I mean, uh, the safety consequences of the procedures themselves I'm not qualified to talk about, but clearly it serves as yet one more incentive for people to illegally immigrate into the United States, in this case, uh, people seeking a particular kind of uh, uh, medical procedures. In the questionnaire, Kamala pledges to slash funding for ICE, cut immigration detention by more than 50 percent, and even express support for ending immigration detention. Have Biden-Harris uh, presidential budget requests reflected Kamala's desire to cut ICE funding? Oh, immigration absolutely. detention. Pension funding, absolutely. It's, it's decreased significantly. And in fact, it needs to be increased significantly because detention is the one way you're going to be able to deter people who want to come into the United States and be released. If you don't release them, the appeal of trying and spending all of that money is significantly less. Um, is... Uh she pledged to end the use of ICE detainers and criticized the cooperation between ICE and state and local law enforcement. How is this going to negatively affect our country? It would make it extremely difficult to enforce immigration law because ICE 
is a relatively small agency and doesn't walk around the streets asking people what their green cards are. The main vehicle for finding illegal aliens, if you don't do worksite enforcement, which this administration has essentially stopped, is working with state and local law enforcement when they arrest people for state and local crimes, their fingerprints go to DHS and they're flagged as somebody that they know to be an illegal immigrant. A detainer is the request um, ICE sends out to say, hold on to this person for 48 hours at least, I mean up to 48 hours so we can go and get them. If you're not using detainers, it is one of the most pro-criminal policies you could imagine because the only people protected by stopping ICE detainers or not honoring them as sanctuary cities do, the only people protected are criminals. So it is a pro-criminal policy as well as an anti-immigration enforcement in general policy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.